now let me turn your attention to keynote speeches that will follow. Joining us in person here at Bordeaux is John Shaw Taylor. He is a professor of computational statistics and machine learning at University College London. He has helped to drive a fundamental rebirth in the field of machine learning and has also been instrumental in assembling a series of influential European networks of excellence. Well, three years ago, he was appointed UNESCO Chair of Artificial Intelligence. And Professor John Shaw Taylor is also the executive director of the International Research Center on Artificial uh, Intelligence, established under the auspices of UNESCO in Ljubljana, Slovenia. So, Professor John Shaw Taylor, please, we are looking forward to hear you. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me, and it's a great uh, honor and privilege to be here. Um, I would like to tell a little bit of a story of how I believe European research has made such an impact in the development uh, and the successful development of uh, artificial intelligence globally, and then hopefully try to paint a story of how I believe we can take that ambition that we have realized into action. So let me start just with um, a little bit of a, a personal view on what I feel really has changed. <clears throat> I think artificial intelligence has broken through a natural barrier between human intelligence and its artificial counterpart, and this has been even for me, who've been working in this field for many years, an unexpected r rapidity of that development. Perhaps the most iconic example, in my view, is the AlphaZero uh, solution that appears to be playing Go at a level beyond the greatest Go masters of all time. And humans are even learning from its tactics. Now, while it can be argued that playing a game is different from acting intelligently in the real world uh, and may not be so useful, I think the advances in natural language processing are demonstrating that our general intelligence is far less unapproachable than we may have assumed. A second example I want to highlight, which has already appeared uh, in, uh, in the video to some extent, is the OECD AI Watch, um, which has been developed in Slovenia. Um, it tracks news articles from across the globe, identifying stories and events relating to AI. It links stories about the same topic and event in different languages. It identifies the sentiment of the stories, negative, neutral, positive, and effectively allows humans to access and analyze a very rich source of global information. This is quite an extraordinary combination of technologies that makes this possible. I believe that both of these solutions have sprung from EU-funded research. So the Pascal Network of Excellence was promoting principal machine learning over a period of 10 years, and while modestly funded, <clears throat> had an extraordinarily uh, wide-reaching uh, influence through its uh, attempt to promote the use of machine learning in sister disciplines, computer vision, natural language processing, which at that time, or at the time that the Pascal Network started, was really only just uh, being thought as, a, as an interesting possibility. The complex uh, project was uh, on composing learning for artificial cognitive systems. Uh, was looking precisely at putting together the kind of systems that were um, then used in the Go playing Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Zero. Indeed, one of the co-eyes on that project was David Silver, who then led the Alpha Zero project at DeepMind. And the X-Life project, combining symbolic and sub-symbolic learning uh, and cross-lingual language, which provided much of the technology that goes into the OEC, OECD AI watch. So I think we can be rightly proud in Europe of what we have achieved in turning this 
page in the development of AI. And this has come largely through the use of machine learning in artificial intelligence. So previously, AI reduced, uh, was reduced to logical deduction, uh, while machine learning seeks patterns in data rather than logical connections. And I think it's true that turning an AI problem into just logical inference may throw the baby out with the bathwater. You reduce it down to something that is uh, you've lost some of the useful information that actually is, is, can be exploited. Uh, he, and I would argue that humans are actually uh, expert at rationalizing our actions after the event. It's not so clear that we always make them so rationally. So perhaps the emphasis on logic was, uh, was, was too strong. And perhaps even to mimic the way we operate in the world, machine learning is far more important than had been imagined. So what is the potential for impact? The possibilities as far as education is concerned, as well as in our bid to meet the other sustainable development goals, make this technology vital. Uh, I think in view of the crises that are facing humanity, AI can no longer be viewed as a luxury, but rather as a necessity for all countries to embrace. But, as has been emphasized by Minister uh, Koritnik, the potential for negative impact is also very significant. Manipulation, surveillance, weaponry, marginalization, uh, etc. AI has the potential for manip manipulation, control, and misinf misinformation. Uh, but I want to emphasize that it's not that there's something new in terms of this is something that people weren't trying to do before. Uh, that certainly has been always part of humankind. But what AI uh, does, it enables scaling in new ways that have already been sh shown to be effective and in ways that perhaps we hadn't anticipated. But equally, AI can defend against such threats. Bias in recruitment has been exposed and a deeper understanding of fairness has emerged. And AI is being used to detect fake news and other sources of misinformation. So how can we prepare? How should we move to make the most of the opportunity that this technology can offer? So the International Research Center on Artificial Intelligence under the auspices of UNESCO um, is funded by the Slovenian government and focuses on the application of AI to sustainable development. And I should like to thank Slovenian governments, past and present, for their continued support of this initiative. It, as mentioned again by the minister, there is the, uh, <clears throat> there is the ambition to create a Pascal-like international network of centers applying AI to sustainable development, but also AI for the measurement of sustainable development goals. And we believe this can lead to a, <clears throat> a revolution in the investment in sustainable development, possibly also through social impact contracts, because we're able to more objectively measure, that will provide the incentive for both um, objective assessment of companies, but also uh, for investment to follow, as we believe investors are actually very keen to support this type of, uh, of company. But also, there's a key focus on education and engagement with developing countries where we've been supporting AI workers to uh, develop projects, applying AI to problems in their local, <coughs> local areas. Building trust in AI is crucial. And I want to present briefly a different perspective. Um, humans have an innate ability to, to develop a theory of mind and this is an understanding of how other humans tick, and hence how to interact constructively and creatively with other human beings. This is actually an incredibly complex and deep skill that AI is yet to even begin to mimic. Um, and the failure to develop this skill manifests more or less in severe difficulties in adjusting to and working in society. But it's something that we do without thinking about it. Um, this is 
uh, I put a reference there for the, this kind of psychological analysis. But understanding and working with AI is different. So I believe that in addition to a theory of the human mind, we need to train people to develop a theory of the artificial mind. In particular, the difference between the human and artificial mind. Such a skill will require an understanding of computational thinking, but also an understanding of how artificial intelligences work, gaining insights into what they can offer and what they cannot, how to interact with them. And I believe this must be embedded in a humanistic perspective, vital to build appreciation of our humanity that goes beyond mere intelligence. Equally, awareness of the dangers when AI is used to manipulate or misrepresent, to understand when this happens and how to defend against it. And I believe this education is not something that we can reserve for highly intelligent or uh, graduate level students or computer science researchers. This has to be something that we bring to the general population. We need to, and not just in our countries, but globally. And this is certainly the ambition we, we have at IRCAI. We need to empower citizens to use AI for society's benefit. And again, I stress, we need to give them the tools that enable not just uh, computer scientists and experts to use AI, but for general population to understand how AI can be used to address the problems um, that they are facing. And this will lead to the trust that we need to build in AI and counter the negative myths. So I believe that Europe can showcase how educating citizens to take control of AI and be creative in its positive application globally can usher in a new era of op optimism and prosperity, that the future will suddenly appear achievable, we can solve our problems, we can build a better world together. Thank you very much. Professor, it was really interesting to listen to your presentation and thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank you.